Hello, you fucks. Welcome to John Solo's Beer Brigade. I'm John Solo, and this here is my buddy, Andrew Gray. And, Andrew, we were just discussing some delicious food. Um, yeah, we were. Yeah. Caesar we're. salad. Well, so you do the Caesar salad with, with spinach. Is that is that the way you all are doing it? No, no. Dominic makes okay. a spinach salad, and he makes a a bacon dressing that's not hot. It's a bacon vinaigrette that is to die for on Ooh. spinach salad. Oh yeah, I would. And he makes a Caesar salad from with the dressing from scratch, and bless his heart, he doesn't put any Parmesan on it, because <laughs> Parmesan is the cheese that tastes that smells like feet. Well, I was I was just telling you we've been doing the uh, so we we can have one cheat meal a week uh, is what it comes out to, um, and we're taking advantage of that. But for the rest, no dairy, no. So I haven't had Parmesan cheese in forever, but uh, no dairy or anything like that. So we just get a you're big, not missing anything. <laughs> You know, I I love the cheese. I love it, but it's it just just it doesn't well, agree with me. Well, I'm lactose intolerant, so cheese, dairy, all of that is something that's pretty rare for me. Yeah, I would avoid that, especially like if you're sleeping in the same bed with your narrator buddy. Don't have any cheese whatsoever. You know that would be, no. <laughs> we don't want to experience that. No, it, and and you know what? If you give me cheese, then put me in a flea bag motel because I can fumigate it for you. <laughs> there, I I'm not sure if it's the cheese, the sugar. I think what it was for me was the eggs. Now eggs are like the superfood. They are perfect in every way, but. The protein in it just did not agree with my body, and I think I finally figured that out. It's the sulfur. Is that what it is? You know, you know when you eat eggs, and you know how they stink when they go bad. Mm -hmm. It's sulfur. Eggs have a lot of things in them that, as we get older, I can't eat as many eggs anymore either. They just don't agree with me. Well, I was eating uh, four to six eggs every day. That was one of my main sources of protein most days. Um, and then I would have like a steak or something at night, but that was a lot of eggs. And it oh, it, that's uh, a huge amount of eggs. Well, and for me, I have I have I've I've had the acne thing my entire life, and it's cystic acne, and and it would just things would be popping out sideways, man. As soon as I eliminated that, that all but disappeared. It's amazing. There you go. I know. Luckily, I can still eat raw peanut butter. So you just take the peanuts and you grind them down, and you get the peanut butter because that's my favorite thing in the world. I can still mm. eat that, so that's awesome. Yeah, look at us. We're we're getting old, dude. When did this fucking happen to us? We're getting old. We're talking about like what? Food I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Next year I turn sixty. I don't know what where the where the time went. <laughs> so you were you were telling me that this Sunday is the big day. Last time we were on the show, we were talking about this. This Sunday is the the garden tour of Pennsylvania or some shit like that. It's right? the garden tour in Carlisle, Pennsylvania, and my yard is on it. And I have been busting my butt to get it ready. That's awesome. Um, and it's supposed to be sunny and 92 degrees. Yeah. Uh, today it is, what is it right now outside? It's 91 here right now. And it's going to be like that most of the week this week. Um, now, are you, uh, you going to take pictures and post them in your group of your yard? Oh, yeah. I'll take pictures. Once it's done, I'll start taking pictures and post them. Because it's I've been doing that. I've been doing that all along a little bit. Mm-hmm. You know, various, various posts through the, through the year, because it's so pretty in the spring with all of the flowers and now that it's the summer stuff. So Cher said she bathed in the sulfur springs in St. Lucia or Lucia. I'm not sure how to say that. I did too. You did too. See you in Dominic. I did too. Yeah. In St. Lucia. I've been there too. Bathed in the, in the volcanic springs in, uh, yep. <laughs> I've not done that. See, now I'm allergic to sulfa based things. Is that the same as sulfur? Sulfa? Uh, I believe. So. Well, basically, yeah. what this is, is it's, at least on St. Lucia, if I remember right, it's volcanic mud. And the, the water comes out warm, and you bathe in this, vol this muddy volcanic warmth. That doesn't seem safe to me, but I'm a blithering idiot, so I'm not sure. You people, it's a great exfoliant. Well, I people were you know rubbing it on their arms and everything to you know exfoliate their skin. And I will tell you, when I came out of that, everything, including my butt, was baby smooth. <laughs> so you were you were fucking mud wrestling. You and Dominic were mud wrestling over in St. Louis. Well, there were all there were all kinds of people, so there was no mud wrestling. 
but he told he he told me that when he felt me up, he said, "Ooh, your butt's smooth." <laughs> that's a fantastic time. All right. Well, that's a great <laughs> that's a great segue then for. Um, and I gotta I. I got to ask you, how do you, do you have a, a, a personal assistant that works with you? How do you plan these out? Because you are one of the authors that I, I brag about, that you're able to plan releases months in advance. You're able to put your promotion into it and actually get behind it. How do you keep track of all these things? Because you're writing these, uh, what, you wrote this six months ago, a year ago, somewhere in there? Um, oh, this one about three months ago. Okay. That's three months ago. You finished this book and you've had three months time. Now, a lot of authors that I talk to are they are releasing like as soon as they get back from their editor they're hitting publish in the indie world well um, well i have them i have them planned because i have it around other other titles so because i've got another one in a couple weeks i've got yeah. um fire and sand in in a couple weeks so that's and that will be the one for july and then the one for august is with my editor now the one for september September is a, is another one that's been in the works for a while. Mm -hmm. And I'm writing the one for October now. That's amazing to me. Um, you, you don't have a personal assistant, though. You're just doing this on yeah. your own, keeping track of the schedule like that? I do this on my own. And I just I just submitted the, the be, a, a great work. Um, Dream Spinner's going to put it out. It'll be sometime next year. It's a cowboy comedy called Buck Me. <laughs> <laughs> no any yep. window there is there <laughs> and a full on cowboy comedy think met think blazing saddles a million ways to die in the west all of that i really went for the absolute rom-com co cowboy comedy andrew i gotta tell you um i haven't worked dream spinner in a while i know we've talked about this on the air before but mm. If, if, if Dream Spinner wants to bring me back for that one, I would be totally down with doing that work right there. Um, Cowboy Comedy I know you would. Like it's right up my alley, man. Um, let's, yep. uh, let's see what we're getting into here. This one is uh, called uh, This Time for Always. Um, and this is, is this the first one in a series? Is it a series? Is it the second? This is, I'm it? hoping it will be a series, but this is the first. This one is... Uh, dedicated to everyone who makes uh, helps me make my stories possible i appreciate your hard work so very much i suppose you did like a blanket to include your husband in that it's still kind of bullshit that you don't well he husband. helps but so does my editor and so does the cover people and so do all and so does everybody else so that's a, that's a blanket right there I'll, I'll give you you blanketed everybody in um now <clears throat> you said that i'm going to be Finnegan in this and, and uh, everybody else, but you're going to be the other guy, Mark and his child. I'm going to be Mark and Lonnie. All right. And understand that, of course, I've, I've not ever looked at this manuscript before. So um, that means I'll, I'll fuck it up accordingly. <clears throat> Here we go. And that's, and that's what they listen for. <laughs> of course they do. Uh, <laughs> here we go. Uh, chapter one. <clears throat> I need backup. Finnegan Pettiprin said into his radio as he made the turn west onto Silver Spring Drive, lights flashing and siren wailing, in pursuit of stolen Nissan Sentra. Heading your way, came a response as the car Finn chased ran a red light, nearly hitting another car with Finn right behind it. He made it through the same intersection in one piece as a second police car appeared up ahead, crossing at Shoreland. The Nissan screeched to a halt as a vehicle turned out of the side street just after the Nissan, which narrowly missed them as it came to a stop. Finn pulled up behind and jumped out, gun drawn as he approached the Nissan. Get out of the car with your hands up, he called as the door opened, his gun and the driver, on the driver, in case he made any sort of move. The man slid out and onto the ground, hands where Finn could see them. This perp clearly knew the routine. Raylan approached from her car, helping secure the suspect, and read him his rights. She was all business, and one tough officer. Finn liked her a great deal and was always glad when she had his back. Raylan got the suspect into her car while Finn went over to the old red escape parked just up the way by the side of the road. Are you okay? Finn asked as the window slid down. I'm assuming this is... Yes. Me. The driver answered. It all happened so fast. I didn't see anyone and then all hell broke loose. He seemed shaken up and Finn leaned a little closer. Both of us are okay. He breathed hard and moved nearer to the window. Finn? Finn got a close look at the driver for the first time. Mark? He asked, his throat instantly dry. Finn hadn't seen him in at least three years, though they had talked on the phone periodically. What are you doing here? 
He relaxed some, knowing Mark wasn't a likely threat. I thought you were in Chicago. Mark nodded. I was, but I've been looking for a job so I can support Lonnie here. He sat back, and Finn smiled through the window at a boy about four years old in his car seat and back. Finn hadn't seen Lonnie since he was a baby. God, time flew. It was hard to believe how big he was. I'm starting, starting work at Quality Graphics in a few days. Mark swallowed hard. I was on my way to try to see you, but I didn't expect it to be like this. He gripped the wheel of the car like it was going to get away from him. Well, I'm off duty in half an hour. I can meet you at the house then, if you'd like. Finn patted the door and stepped back. Be careful as you pull away, and I'll see you then. I have a few things I have to finish up. It was really good to see Mark again. Maybe it, it, maybe it was his police suspiciousness, but instinct told him that things weren't going so well for Mark. He wondered why Mark had shown up all of a sudden and what he might want. Not that he wasn't happy to see him, just that Finn wasn't big on surprises. An old friend of yours? Raylan asked. Since fourth grade. There had been a lot of water under the bridge since then. He was my first real friend. His first best friend? His first crush? The reason he figured out he liked guys and his biggest secret. Finn had never even breathed a syllable to Mark about how he had felt, and after graduation their paths had taken them in different directions. She nodded slowly. I'm going to take this guy to the station and get him processed. Follow me in and then go ahead and write up your report. I can take care of him. Lamar is out of town until tomorrow so I can finish this up before I go home. You don't need to do that, Finn told her, but he appreciated the offer. Why not? You've done that for me more than once. Now let's get going so you can go see your friend and do something at home other than sit on the sofa watching television, eating a frozen dinner, and drinking a beer. She hit him with a glare that told him he didn't dare argue with her. Not if he wanted his balls where they were. So go spend some time with your friend and I can take care of this. She motioned toward the car where Finn could see the suspect getting impatient and antsy. His mama didn't raise no fools, and Finn knew when to back off. Okay, thank you. He went back to his car and followed Raylan to the station. He backed her up as she transported the perp inside and got him settled for booking. Then Finn went to his desk, wrote up his report and got it filed, and headed out. Finn always loved fall. The leaves were just beginning to change color and there was a nip in the evening air. It was dark as he parked his car in the garage, the motion lights coming on in the backyard as he passed through to his small Lannanstone Tudor house. Finn took the single step up to the deck on the side of the house, unlocked the back door and went inside. He turned on the lights and went out front to find Mark and Lonnie coming up the walk, Mark holding his son's hand. Finn opened the screen door and held it so they could come inside. I always loved this house, Mark said. Finn's grandmother had left it to him when she passed away while Finn had been crossing the equator on an aircraft carrier somewhere in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. He and Mark had come here often as kids. Finn smiled as Mark drew him in for a hug. It's so good to see you. There was something unsettling in the pit of his belly as the old attraction, something he thought would have died out long ago, flared to life. Without thinking about it, he inhaled and his head grew lighter as his nose filled with rich musk. He had always loved that scent, and it fueled his almost forgotten desire. He stepped back, probably more quickly than was necessary. Daddy, Lonnie said. I gotta go. He bounced from foot to foot. Mark took his hand and Finn motioned to the small first floor bathroom tucked next to the stairs. At least he'd have a minute now to clear his head. Finn went back to the kitchen. He had remodeled it a few years earlier with light cabinets and granite countertops. He checked the refrigerator and then the freezer, pulling out some sauce he'd made. Are you hungry? Finn asked when Mark found him, still holding Lonnie's hand. I can make some pasta and sauce. Mark nodded. Things have been hard, Finn. He said, sitting at the small table, drawing Lonnie onto his lap. That was pretty obvious. The two of them seemed rough around the edges and pulled a little thin. Ben certainly didn't remember Mark looking this ragged. Can I get you something to drink? Ben pulled out a couple of beers and set them on the table. Mark looked at the bottles, but didn't reach for one. What would Lonnie like? Some juice or water would be great for both of us. Mark's voice grew rough, and Finn peered around the refrigerator door. I don't drink anymore. He added gently as he closed his arms a little tighter around Lonnie. There was definitely a story there, 
and the police officer and Finn was more than curious. But he pulled out some pineapple juice and poured a glass for each of them. He set the glasses on the table and put the beer away. Daddy, I'm hungry, Lonnie said softly, leaning against Mark's chest. Finn got out a few crackers and put them on the table before starting the water for the pasta. He was a decent cook when he took the time. Mostly, he had frozen things that he reheated because it was easier. What sort of job did you get? What will you be doing? Finn asked Mark, acutely aware of him, even when his back was turned. Finn remembered Mark's gorgeous, wide blue eyes and his wavy, dark hair that flowed almost to his shoulders. It had almost glistened, but now it seemed dull and a little listless, sort of like Mark. Do you want to play with your toys? Mark asked Lonnie, and he slipped down to the floor. Mark pulled a few small cars out of his pocket, and Lonnie wandered out to the hall. Is he okay to play? Of course. They could keep an eye on him through the doorway. Finn got out the things for a simple salad and began tearing lettuce into a bowl. I need your help, Finn, Mark said softly. So his instincts were right in a number of ways. What sort of help? Finn asked, his natural skepticism coming forward. Is it money? Because I don't really have any to spare. The color drained from Mark's face. Not like that, I... He looked down toward the floor. We've been friends for a long time, and I know I can trust you. He was delaying, but Finn said nothing. He knew that was the quickest way to get Mark to say what he needed. Mark had always been the kind of guy who could never handle the quiet. They needed to fill any space in a conversation. At least, that was how he had been when they were kids. I got into trouble with alcohol, and I did some dumb things. Really dumb. Finn paused. What sort of dumb? I dated the wrong guy dumb, or I held up a liquor store dumb? His gut clenched in an instant. Closer to the second one, I'm afraid. I was drinking too much, though I thought I had it under control. I lost my job and needed money and got involved with people I shouldn't have. I was so far out of my head, I don't remember a lot of it. I got busted, and after I turned in everyone I knew, they dropped the charges as long as I got the help I needed. Mark held his head. I was damn lucky, and I know it. I got out of the city and got the job here, but I have no money, and I was hoping I could stay with you for a little while. That was totally unexpected. What about your parents? Finn asked as he put the pasta in the water, stirred it, and then got the sauce heating. God, this was not the kind of thing he had envisioned. Mark winced, and his eyes got panicky. I don't want to lose Lonnie, okay? His hand shook. While I was getting dried out and in therapy to try to kick the booze, my parents had Lonnie. I had to fight to get him back. But he lived with them for three months, and they have this the idea that they would be better parents for him than I will be. The entire time he was with them, they tried to convince me that I should let them raise him, but I can't. He's my son. Mark's eyes grew watery. Shit, I'm sorry. I shouldn't be laying any of this at your feet. It isn't fair. I'm the one who made a mess of everything. Where's Wendy? Finn asked. Why isn't she in the picture? You were two... Ah, you two were together for a few years. He'd been surprised when Mark had first told him that they were expecting a baby. Wendy had always said, at least as far as Finn knew, that she had no interest in having children. She stayed until Lonnie was two and then met someone else. Mark leaned closer. She never wanted a kid, and though she stuck it out, it just wasn't working for either of us. I mean, we were friends before, and we still are, of a sort. But she and I were never in love. It was a one-time thing that lasted too long because we got together. I did what I thought was right for my son, but in the end, I messed that up too. Where is she now? Fan asked, giving the pasta a stir and checking the sauce. Then he peered around to where Lonnie was running his cars over the hardwood floor of the entrance hall. He was so adorable. And Finn sighed softly to himself. The truth was that deep down, he'd been jealous of Mark when he'd told him he and Wendy were expecting. Finn had always known that kids weren't in the cards for him. She's getting married. 
Wendy found the perfect man. He's 10 years older, has no interest in kids at all, and is an international art dealer. So he flies all over and Wendy goes with him. The last I heard, she was with him in Dubai. I think she's happy and I have Lonnie. When Mark spoke of his son, his eyes grew soft and the harsh lines near his mouth smoothed out. But you have a new job and don't have a place to live, Fenn said, bringing Mark back to the central topic. That's about it. There's no money, and my folks said they would loan me some to get an apartment to start out as long as I'd let Lonnie stay with them. His foot bounced on the floor. With Mom and Dad, everything has a price. They wouldn't just help me. No. They use the situation to try to get what they want. There was a touch of panic in his voice. We've been staying with them up to a few days ago, but I can't do that any longer. I can imagine. Mark's parents had never been the uh, warm, fuzzy kind of people. To Finn, when he and Mark were kids, they had seemed more interested in themselves than their children, like they were an afterthought. It takes money for us to get a place. It would only be for a few weeks until I can get paid and get some money together. Lonnie raced in. Is the food ready? He asked Mark in a stage whisper. Finn smiled. Almost, I promise. Do you want to help me? God, what did he know about kids? I uh, have some grapes, and you could take them off the stem. He set up Lonnie at the table, where more grapes went into the little boy than into the bowl. That's, oops, I see you. That's enough, grape, grape napper. Uncle Finn is making us dinner. You don't need to spoil your appetite. It had been a long time since Finn had heard that name. And he wasn't sure if Mark was doing it on purpose. But the last time he had seen Mark and Lonnie, Mark had referred to him as Uncle Finn. Lonnie chuckled as Mark tickled him. And the happy sound filled the house with a little unabashed joy that Finn hadn't heard or felt for quite a while. Finn got the salad on the table, then got plates and silverware before draining the pasta and adding the sauce. Once it was mixed, he carried it onto the table, and they all sat down. Lonnie took a single piece of pasta on his fork and blew on it carefully before taking a small bite. Finn's cooking must have met his approval because he dug right in. Do you like it? Good, Lonnie said with a grin before taking another bite. Mark ate quietly, watching his son, and when his gaze traveled to him... Finn felt that same old flutter in his belly. Those eyes were exactly as he remembered them. Agreeing to help Mark was probably the absolute wrong thing to do. Mark was a friend, and Finn didn't need complications in his life. There was also the fact that Mark was obviously trying to get his life back on track, and God knew the kind of chaos all that was going to bring, not to mention with a four-year-old. But Mark was his oldest friend. The guy had been through hell, and it sounded like he was coming out the other side. It wasn't like Finn didn't know how to handle trouble. He was a cop. He did it each and every day. Thank you for dinner, Mark said after a few minutes. I know what I said earlier, but I wasn't being fair, dumping my issues on you. He smiled at Lonnie and took another bite of pasta. Finn's belly jitters increased, and he set down his fork. No, you did the right thing. What the hell were friends for? In the Navy, he had been close to a number of guys, and if they had asked, he wouldn't have hesitated. Was Mark all that different just because Finn had unresolved feelings for him? Besides, he wasn't going to put him and Lonnie out in the cold. I have three bedrooms upstairs. You can take the guest room, and we'll make up a room for Lonnie tomorrow. The butterflies in his belly settled right down. He finished his dinner, and then, once they got Lonnie settled in front of the TV, he helped Mark bring in the stuff from his car. Is there more you need to get? Finn asked as he pulled out the final carrying bag. Mark shook his head and Finn realized that his best friend's entire life and that of his son fit in the trunk of a car. He had to help. And that would be it for chapter one of This Time for mm. Always. Um, and uh, is, this, is this today, releasing today? Is that right? It's released. It's out there in the world. Ta-da! Is it on uh, KU, Kendall Unlimited? Yep. Yep, it's out there on KU, so you can you can you can read it, you can buy it, you can do it all. And I've said it before, but I'll say it again. If ever this writing thing just doesn't work out for you, you'll have a career in narrating small children in books. I'm telling you, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, 
<laughs> I will, uh, as usual, I'll get this up to YouTube. We're actually back on YouTube again, so I'll get this up on YouTube. I'll get it over Excellent. to Jane Stoff so she can put it in your group, and I appreciate uh, having you Sounds on, good. Sounds like Excellent. Sounds um, wonderful. Cool. Uh, here's the easy part. Wave bye to the crowd, and we will see you all, bye I guess, in a crowd. couple of weeks. Have fun. <laughs> Waving bye to the crowd.